All right, and welcome back. This video will be the first video of actual work toward building a component of the wing kit. Now, I did a whole bunch of research and a lot of thought and tried to figure out where I wanted to start on the wing kit itself. The first section has you start with the spar and has you do some countersinking and some other things that are directly on the spar, which is a very expensive piece. But uh, it sets it up to eventually work on the ribs and kind of go with the flow of putting the wing together first. Well, I had initially thought that I was going to outsource my fuel tanks. Um, the big uh, concern being the same one that everyone has, and that's ProSeal. Nobody likes to work with ProSeal. So after talking to some folks and uh, going on to vansairforce.net and looking at the forums there and talking to folks, I've kind of really decided that I am going to take this on after all. Um, the way I see it, the worst going to happen is I just royally screw things up and I have to reorder all the parts for the tanks and then send them off to get done. But I don't think that they're going to be that difficult and I don't think that it's going to be that big of a problem. Um, there are folks who have had their tanks leak and it is a pain if it does leak to fix, but I think it's worth a try. So I decided I'm going to go ahead and do it. And being that that's the part that people hate the most or are kind of fearful, I guess, the most of, I figured since my enthusiasm is at its peak at the beginning of the kit, might as well work on the part that the people hate the most. <laughs> so my idea is that while I have as much motivation as I have to get things going and just work through stuff, go ahead and work on the the shitty part, pardon my language. So I decided I'm going to work on the fuel tanks first. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, here you see me fluting the uh, ribs. Um, it has you uh, deburr everything, flute the ribs to get everything straight. Um, also it has you verify that the flanges are at 90 degrees to the webbing. All that kind of stuff. So that's what you'll see me do for the vast majority of this video. Um, it's no different than you saw on the ribs for say the horizontal stabilizer or any other piece that you've worked on so far. Same concept, um, using the uh, 3M uh, cloth, whatever you call that, um, scratch pad uh, to deeper the, the flanges and everything. And for the ends that that um, have a little bit more, uh, where basically where they cut the metal, sometimes you have little ridges and so for those parts, I took it over to my grinding wheel and used the, uh, the, the uh, wheel to, to get rid of those burrs. And then uh, took the uh, whole D burr and, and took that to all the holes on, on all, the, all the ribs as well. So go through and clean everything up. Um, one thing that's been pointed out in other uh, video blogs is to do all the deburring first. Um, as, as some other folks have pointed out, it's a lot easier to do it first and then flute than try to flute and then deburr. So do all that first and then get everything straight with a rib, set it aside and work on the next piece. So in general, um, most of the parts here, they weren't too bad. It, it, there was a little bit of, of fluting they had to do, as you can see here. Um, and some of them had a slight twist to it, so you just kind of fold it, or, you know, form it as you need to get to the way you need the piece to be. And then set it aside and, like I said, work on the next part and get through all the deburring. And, and it is a long process. All the deburring, there's a lot to do to get all of these pieces, that, you know, the way they need to be to sit in correctly when you go to rivet. And... So you spend, you know, if you're doing it right, you're spending quite a bit of time working on deburring. Um, so here you see me using a, a square stock of aluminum to verify that the flanges are all 90 degrees. And for the most part, they were. There was only a couple pieces where I had to bend out a little bit, but they all looked pretty good from the factory. Um, but I find it easier to have that little uh, uh, right-angled aluminum piece, aluminum stock, to gauge 
the 90 degree uh, than worrying about setting up a compass or whatever you call it, uh, a protractor or whatever you call it. Um, so that was the easy, quick method. You can just go down to like Ace Hardware and pick up some stock. So get that taken care of. And now the next step, once you get everything deburred, is you grab um, one of the one of the ribs. I forget which one it is off the top of my head. You'll see here in a moment. But you're gonna drill another access hole onto the rib um, and it's for I want to say it was for either the the vent line or for the fuel line adapter piece and you measure specifically uh, it's all it's all pointed out in the instructions obviously but you measure out the spot drill a, a, a guide hole basically and then you use the universal step drill bit to um, to create the hole, I, I believe you step it up to a three-quarters uh, hole. Um, and you'll see that when you do that here in just a moment. Uh, now I'm doing all the final drilling for all of the flanges that will sit against the skins. Uh, these are all size 40 holes. So you take your drill and go through and final drill. It's kind of surprising you didn't attach everything to the skins first and final, final drill with the skins in place. Um, I'm assuming the skins are already final sized, so you don't have to with the skins. Um, but you go through all the ribs, do the 40, and then uh, grab the, the number 30 drill bit, and you'll do the ends where it will meet up with the baffle, the rear baffle, um, and final size everything. And then a lot of these, you see the holes in the bottom corner there, and that's obviously to allow fuel to go from uh, one one section of the tank to the other. And uh, many know, but some who may not, RV-14s, as, as with all the other RV models, use what's called a wet wing. Uh, the fuel sits directly against the metal. There's no kind of bladder or anything inside the wing to hold the fuel. It's all, you know, just sits directly into the, the metal itself. And so you, really spend a lot of time with uh, sealants and in that kind of thing but also there's a lot of uh, baffles and, and that sort of thing so here this is where you see that you you make the extra hole in the rib and basically I, I marked it out and then I used the punch to uh, make sure that my drill bit didn't wander and uh, make a pilot hole and then you use the universal uh, uh, as you see here use a universal step drill bit uh, to mark it up to or to open the hole up to a three-quarter inch um, now one of the lessons I've learned from previous uh, attempts is I now every time I use the uh, step drill bit I always take my micrometer and I measure to make sure that I am going to the right size uh, I made the mistake of oversizing what should have been a, a quarter inch hole I made it a, a, a three sixteenths uh, hole and uh, I'm sorry, a three eighths hole, and so I I oversized it and uh, had to order a new part. So ever since then, I always verify with a micrometer that the step that I'm going to is indeed the size that I want. Um, so here you attach a flange to the uh, to the hole you just made, and then you make the final you final drill the the holes that will attach that piece to the to the uh, rib. Um, so the first, the instructions basically say just center it on the hole that you made, make sure that no part of the flange sticks above, uh, or the adapter, I guess, or whatever you call it, the piece that you're attaching there. Uh, you want to make sure it doesn't stick above the rib and the flange of the rib so that it doesn't interfere with the skins. Um, but other than that, you make your first hole and then, uh, click it, make a second hole and click it, and then you just kind of attach or drill the rest of the holes using the adapter flange as the guideline. So the rest of this video is going to be deburring uh, the parts that I've already drilled holes in, in final size, all the holes and whatnot, uh, using the deburring bit in my, my drill, and it makes it a lot quicker to do. So I'm going to go ahead and let this video run out here, and uh, we'll start getting the next video edited and put together and try to get a few of these put out. Uh, it's, it's nice to be working on the wing kit. So if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, leave them below. If you could, hit that like button for me. And we'll see you guys next time around. I appreciate you guys watching these videos. We'll see you next time.